Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, to our uh, webinar on uh, digital transformation and taxation. Um, I would like to welcome first uh, our distinguished uh, uh, speakers and panelists uh, that we will uh, listen to uh, in, in, in during during the first part of the of the webinar. And I would like also to invite uh, the viewers and and uh, all those joining us uh, to actually send us questions and, and raise questions uh, to the panelists which we can actually address in the second part of the webinar during the uh, question and answers uh, session. Um, just um, maybe a very short introduction uh, what was uh, our thinking and, and, and considerations and also sort of our, our goal of, of uh, this webinar and why we decided to, to organize it. Um, maybe it seems that uh, now when we are just in the middle of a very difficult discussion between the US and European counterparts on the uh, future of uh, the international endeavor when it comes to digital taxation, which was started uh, yesterday by the US announcement to withdraw from the OECD led work. Um, it seems like that we were actually sort of anticipating this, uh, just try, believe us, uh, it, uh, it sort of happened as a coincidence, but I think it's, it's uh, as well very timely. Uh, to have this discussion, uh, it, it seems, and uh, especially right now after and basically during and linked to the COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, crisis, um, we, we see a, a number of issues that are very much topical uh, for our debate. Um, one is uh, the growing uh, importance of digitalization of activities uh, uh, in, in various uh, economic sectors. Um, what, what was actually, uh, let's say, a continuous trend uh, during the past decade, um, the digitalization of, of uh, business was very much accelerated uh, by, uh, by the COVID crisis. And uh, to be honest, our, our webinar is just one, one of the examples uh, how the digitalization is actually uh, spreading uh, across uh, different, different sectors. Uh, that's on one hand. On the other hand, we also saw that, um, uh, for example, that the, the digital uh, technology companies, uh, mainly the, the global players, uh, were one of those who uh, were actually uh, on, on the safe side, if, if you allow me to say so, uh, during the uh, during the COVID uh, COVID pandemic, and many many of the online services providers were actually uh, growing their activities. Um, and this is this is very very much uh, linked to the questions and debates we, we are currently having uh, about um, the appropriate way uh, to establish a, a taxation that, a framework that would that would actually uh, target those those kind of activities. Um, I mentioned the OECD led led works that that is that is one strand of work uh, that is actually uh, at least from my view, but I think it's shared by by others. That that would be uh, the the most relevant for bringing uh, together the global players. But uh, I think we all remember also the European Union-led debates uh, among the member states that they were actually following the, the proposal from the European Commission back in 2018 um, on the European uh, digital digital tax. And last but not least, we have a number of member states who were actually or who are actually uh, working on on their own legislative proposals when it comes to, for example, digital taxation. Um, so I think that that would uh, sort of set, uh, set uh, our scene for today. Um, uh, we have panelists uh, from from various uh, sectors and with various backgrounds, um, and and I think uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing their views and and looking forward to a very um, interesting discussion today. Um, without any uh, further delay, I would ask uh, my colleague Ivan Stefanet um, to uh, to give us. Uh, his uh, opening remarks. Ivan Stefanets is a fellow member of the European Parliament, a uh, member of IMCO committee, and, and also uh, the president of SME, SME Europe of, of EPP. So Ivan, uh, the, the floor and floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I really do agree that this debate is uh, important and timely because we live in challenging time of crisis and uh, we are looking for solutions, how, how to overcome it. And as we know, in this special time, European Commission came with a special new tool, so-called Recovery Fund. And I really do believe that digital solutions should play major parts, not only in this Recovery Fund, but also generally, they should play a major role in European recovery and European future. 
Uh, therefore, this debate about digital transformation and taxation about opportunities and challenges is right uh, to the point. Um, I'd like to stress out that uh, in every situation, uh, we as responsible people should not only talk about how to spend money, but also how to pay them back. And uh, from this regard, uh, taxation is, of course, a substantial uh, element. Uh, but the role of taxation should not only be uh, how to fund uh, public budget, but taxation plays crucial role in business environment. Therefore, it should be simple, fair, and uh, neutral. It is particularly true when we talk about the digital taxation. And on top of that, taxation should uh, not add additional burden to the specific sectors and does limit innovation and uh, progress. Uh, bearing in our minds, uh, our job creators, uh, uh, we shall see the whole tax burden on job creators. And this is in Europe quite a big number. Uh, but also we have another big number, which is a uh, number of uncollected taxes. Therefore, let me uh, highlight in this debate also that this is the point which many people tend to forget. And this is the point of billions of euro of uncollected tax taxes. Um, and I would prefer rather the, to have debate also about uh, improving efficiency of uh, current tax system rather than creating new taxes. Um, we should always keep in mind also the whole tax burden and tax composition will probably change with uh, digital, digital taxation. Uh, if we ask ourselves what are really digital taxes, uh, many political debates uh, very often focus on the differences between taxing physical business operations and virtual operations, but uh, I do believe that digital economy means many different things. And this is the same true for digital taxes. They include policies that specifically target businesses which provide products or, or services through digital means using a special tax rate or tax base. And this is related, for example, to classical consumption taxes like VAT, uh, this is related to digital service taxes uh, or to tax preferences for digital businesses, but also to digital permanent establishment rules or even to gross-based withholding taxes on digital services. But the point is that uh, we should always keep big picture and total amount of taxation. This is important particularly for small and medium entrepreneurs, uh, which are major job creators in the European Union. Uh, small and medium entrepreneurs do not have chances to optimize their tax base as uh, international companies and therefore the simplicity and total tax burden is uh, very important for them. And uh, last but not least, let me highlight the point of subsidiarity. We should not forget the subsidiarity principles in the European Union in terms of taxation. And we should fight for simple rules and standardization, but uh, decision about tax rates is on national level. And uh, I think we should keep this uh, principle also in future. So once again, let me thank you for invitation and I wish you all fruitful webinar and many good ideas. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you actually for uh, bringing up uh, the entire context of, of the economic reco recovery we are currently in and debates uh, or re regarding the, the instruments that are actually aimed uh, and, and also uh, for uh, recalling some of the let's say uh, key taxation principles and, 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 and uh, um, uh, so sort of a guidelines that, that we should we should follow when uh, discussing the uh, taxation policies uh, thank you once again uh, Right now, I would like to uh, invite our keynote speakers. Uh, I would uh, first give the floor to Barbara Köln, uh, who is um, a vice president of the General Council of the Austrian National Bank and also uh, head of the uh, Friedrich Hayek Institute. Um, Barbara, I hope you can hear us and uh, good. So uh, the, the floor is yours. 
Well, thank you very much, Andre, for the kind introduction. And I have to apologize, as you can see from the background, I'm on a train. So please uh, bear with me, but I try to, uh, I hope the, the line works well. And as you know, Austrian, econo Austrian infrastructure obviously is very good and uh, the Wi-Fi should work. So, and uh, without further dig digital taxation, of course. Um, Coming to the to the point and and having had the withdrawal of the U.S. Uh, to the negotiations uh, uh, coming on withdrawal from the negotiation table, put it this way, uh, this will hopefully start a rethinking of um, of the authorities and not only on the supranational level, on the Brussels level, but also on the on the national level. As you know, Austria actually was prior uh, against the digital tax. And then the government changed its mind and was flowing with the with the people in Brussels and, and uh, was uh, promoting it. Uh, we obviously have an opportunity right now, since uh, all the governments uh, have, uh, due to COVID, have to find a way of how to balance their budgets because they spend a lot of money. They will of course raise taxes, but it will hopefully not be those for for. Um, for digital taxation. So what is on the table? We see those two proposals uh, that tax profits generated in the European member states territory. The digital platform is deemed to have a taxable digital presence and, it's full, and it fulfills one of the following criteria. First of all, it exceeds the threshold of, of 7 billion euro in the annual, uh, annual revenues in a member state. Second, it has more than 100,000 users in a member state in a taxable year and third uh, over 3,000 business contracts uh, for digital services are created between the company and business users in a taxable year so uh, we have to be very careful if if the EEC uh, if the European Commission's proposal is designed to ensure that online businesses uh, contribute to public finances at the same level as the traditional uh, brick and mortar companies uh, we we are doomed, so we have to be very careful. And on the second thing, uh, we must ask what the EU motives are here. Is the European Green Deal because this will cost one trillion euro and must be financed somehow. So is the digital tax a way to indirectly finance this, or is it meant to get digital companies to pay the their so-called fair share? Um, the European Commission claims that traditional companies pay. 23.2% in taxes, uh, and while the digital companies only pay 10%, um, this is totally untrue, and we have to keep that in mind. Uh, there are several studies. I just only quote one by the by Brussels says think tank that we cooperate with ACP, and they they uh, found out that um, when we actually look at the data. Traditional companies paid 27.7%, while digital, uh, digital companies pay 29%. So these data were collected from 2012 to 2017. And if you look at the, uh, at more, into more detail of the, uh, the corporate taxes, say like Alphabet, which is a Google company, they pay 26%. Facebook pays 27.7%. Microsoft, 28%. And Amazon, 38%. So these are the facts that we have to keep in mind and um, that, um, that show that the aim of, uh, of, uh, of the EC to make fair adjustments or fair tax paying uh, is, is not true. Um, we have from a libertarian perspective, from our think tanks perspective and a couple of others, we have already sent out a couple of proposals um, to, and also uh, protest notes that this is, uh, is, not, um, uh, is not working and, not, uh, and has, no, has no positive effects and consequences. As a matter of fact, uh, we will actually, uh, as, as uh, was already mentioned by and even uh, we will see that both um, uh, the US but also China will ask for more taxation for our products and our goods that we sell, that we export to those countries. So it's a do it this that we that doesn't get us anywhere. After all, we must keep in mind that if uh, goods and uh, if goods are, are not taxed and are, are not 
um, are transported free from border to border, um, the, uh, it will be more successful, it will be more uh, growth creation, it will be more wealth creation. And this is what obviously the, the, East, uh, the Commission has totally forgotten uh, when they designed uh, this digital tax for, for uh, fairness reasons. And then there is this other proposal as an interim measure until the first proposal can be implemented. And this is an indirect tax of revenues from certain digital activities that escape uh, the current tax regime or the current tax framework, um, such as revenue created from selling online advertising space and created from digital intermediary activity, which allows uh, users to interact with other users which can facilitate the sale of goods and services between them. So uh, created from the sale of data generated from user provided information. And here again, we have to be very careful because this tax would apply only to firms with total annual worldwide revenues of 750 billion euros and, uh, the EU and uh, with revenues in the EU of over 50 uh, billion. So smaller companies would therefore be unaffected. However, and this is where I say however, and this is very important with that, I probably uh, stopped for the first year. Um, small countries like Austria, for example, think that these taxes should be, um, uh, should be used also on a national level um, to, uh, to get more revenues for uh, financing government. Um, as you all know, I think I'm one of those opponents of, of taxation and that we need to keep taxes the, slow, the lowest as possible and that we have to have a competitive tax structure for our European uh, countries because otherwise we will, lose, uh, we will lose out with the rest of the world. So in short, um, we should probably then discuss if such a tax uh, should be or how it could be designed uh, definitely not the way that we see these days, uh, but um, well, that it's uh, put on the table. But I hope, with uh, having with what we see from the U.S. right now, that this proposal will be at least proposed uh, postponed for a while, and that it will not be combined with the so-called Green Deal to finance that one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Um, well, first of all, let me uh, say that uh, apparently the digitalization with Austrian railway service providers is uh, very well advanced because we heard you very well. And, and uh, th thank you for, for your remarks. Uh, I think uh, it, it was, uh, it was um, actually good to also remind us uh, on the general uh, let's say purpose of, of the, the digital taxation and, and, uh, and the way it should be designed and also uh, um, bringing uh, into uh, the debate uh, the question uh, of the level playing field, let's say, between, between traditional companies and, and the digital companies. And I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, we will come, come back to you, uh, or come back to these issues actually in, in our debate. Um, I will now ask uh, Dmitry Yegorov, who is a Deputy Secretary General for Tax and Customs Policies from uh, the Ministry of Finance in Estonia uh, to uh, uh, present his uh, keynote uh, contribution to, to this webinar. Dmitry, uh, floor is yours. Um, thank you, Andre. Um, thank you very much for this invitation. I'm really happy to be participating, although not as mobile as Barbara. I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm really amazed. Uh, this, is, this is a new level. Um, uh, let me focus on the uh, three issues uh, uh, that relate uh, to taxation of digital companies and that kind of uh, reflect on um, our own experience or opposition. Uh, we are known and we actually are a country, a truly digital country, uh, which has been tested by this uh, COVID-19 um, uh, situation now. So um, we do have a lot of these companies, but of course we don't have a lot of uh, uh, headquarters and definitely not a lot of headquarters of the size that we are discussing at the moment uh, um, at the OECD and also at the uh, um, EU. Uh, of course, we do have companies who are part of these international groups and, and we have them participating uh, in our economy. And of course, we are dealing with the same situation that they're not paying their taxes here. And the operational word being here, 
Uh, and when, when I mean, mention taxes, of course, I mean the, the profit tax, because uh, obviously uh, value-added taxes and also if they employ people, then labor taxes are being paid uh, very well. So we raised the question as, as a country, as a, as a presidency of uh, EU uh, Council in the second half of 2017, and we actually did not want specifically to bash anyone pardon my language, uh, for, for um, uh, not paying the taxes, but just to draw attention that uh, currently in the 21st century, we have one more jurisdiction, namely the internet, that is very poorly covered by the rules, particularly by the rules of, of taxation, um, which uh, have always uh, been designed uh, to, um, to have the traditional, the, the geography um, uh, in mind, the, the borders and, and, and so forth. What we have now, the discussions both at the OECD and uh, at the EU level has a completely different focus. So we're talking about taxation of digital giants. This is not something we wanted to talk about. We wanted to bring an, the attention to the fact that there are companies, irrespective of size, small, medium, and large, for whom the jurisdiction is the internet, but there's no Ministry of Finance of the internet, and there's no tax administration of the internet. So we have to come with uh, some sort of uh, solution so that uh, we see fairness in, in, in tax payments there. So we we do feel concerned about the principle of uh, single entity, taxation of single entity not properly respected in relation to um, uh, digital businesses as it is with traditional. So if you have a traditional subsidiary, you would have to pay taxes on the profits of that subsidiary. But with the digital, you don't actually have to have a subsidiary in other country and so you're not uh, paying the taxes uh, the way traditional business uh, um, uh, does and we actually don't want to uh, compare too much you know how much taxes uh, digital businesses pay and how much taxes traditional uh, uh, companies pay because we have evaders and avoiders in both types of company both the traditional businesses and digital business can and some of them do avoid taxes what we are after is that companies who are active in our economy whether they are traditional companies or digital companies should be under the same rules of competition, including taxation. So this has been the, the, the key premise for us uh, uh, all along. Um, contrary to um, uh, what has been said in the invitation email, Estonia does not plan to introduce such tax. So we do not currently have plans to introduce a, a, a digital tax. Uh, it has been a clear message on many occasions uh, from our Minister of Finance uh, at the moment. But the media really wants the tax. Our media outlets really want the tax because they feel they have disproportionately lost the revenue, particularly the advertisement revenue to foreign digital giants. And uh, they feel like the, the situation is not really uh, uh, comparable, is not fair um, uh, for them. Uh, what we are currently working on, uh, it's a little bit uh, different, a side topic, but still very important. And we also know that the OECD and the European Commission are working on that, is um, setting up an obligation to submit income data from those who earn income on digital platforms. So whether it's Uber or Bolt or Airbnb or Booking or whatever. So we were the first in the world to offer voluntary submission of data, transfer of data from these apps by users to their pre-filled tax return. Uh, and we are very much thankful for the cooperation we had with platforms, uh, but the voluntary nature is finding its limits. So uh, we're looking at, at obligatory uh, submission of, of income data. Now for the last question in terms of preferences, uh, the position of the country, well, we have always been a strong proponent of uh, virtual permanent establishment or if you say significant digital presence. So basically, respect, irrespective of how you participate in the economy of a country, whether it's uh, virtual or physical, we feel that if you are playing a very important part in the economy of a country, then you should be subjected to the same rules that are in effect for traditional um, uh, physical businesses. I don't actually personally subscribe very much to the view that uh, we should not ring fence digital economy. Uh, we, uh, we do ring fence construction. We do ring fence uh, extractive industries. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, special rules for transportation, for maritime, for, for aviation. So, and, and then at the same time, we're saying, you know, let's not ring fence the digital economy. 
And what we're doing instead is we're trying to push the digital economy into the framework that has never been designed for the for digital economy. It has always been designed for, for physical businesses. So it's something to be uh, paying attention to here. So in this respect, we like the proposal of the United States very much that uh, was there for the discussions at the OECD to base uh, the possible change in taxation on marketing intangibles because we feel that this would change a very important element, but still just one element in the current uh, profit taxation regime, the international regime, but it would keep the rest of the system intact. I mean, and we have been building the system for many, many decades. So uh, this is something uh, that people know, understand and so forth. So all it would have done is attribute to marketing intangibles as a tax base to that jurisdictions where to which those marketing intangibles uh, relate. And uh, unfortunately, we see that this uh, proposal didn't fly, so we're sorry to see that. And, and maybe um, right now it's a good idea to return to it and, and, and discuss it again. So um, this is something we should, uh, we should uh, consider. And for the preferences, we prefer international agreed rules over unilateral actions. There's no doubt uh, there. But uh, if we cannot agree on international uh, solution, then we put fairness above international disagreement. So uh, if there is uh, international disagreement, then we have to look at what's, uh, what's fair, even if it's an interim solution. Of course, we don't think that taxing revenue instead of profit is a good idea if profit is what we are after. So we have to respect the, the international treaties and turnover at the moment is possibly the only alternative uh, that we can um, uh, look at because there are, there are international treaties for, for uh, profit. So if there is a widespread agreement in the EU, Estonia, of course, will not stand in the way. And this solution may just give us uh, enough time to continue our discussions at the OECD, which is where our preferred solution uh, should come from. So perhaps this may take some steam out of a boiling pot, and the pot is indeed boiling, as we see from, from yesterday's um, uh, news. So I'll conclude uh, here. I'm very much looking forward to questions and, and further discussion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dmitry, uh, for uh, uh, raising the views. So obviously, from uh, from Estonia, from one of one of those governments that is, I think, um, um, let's say, an example of, of how to uh, include digital services into the way the the public sphere operates, but also uh, in in relations between the the public and and, and private uh, private sector, and. Um, Thank you for uh, for raising uh, these uh, various issues, not only the, the international um, uh, discussions, but also uh, also the, the, the European one. Um, uh, and I'm pretty sure also that we will come back to this uh, during during our debate. Um, then uh, that would be for our uh, keynote interventions uh, at, at this particular point. And I would like now to uh, give the floor to uh, first Francois Chedric who is uh, Vice President of Finance Tax, uh, responsible for Finance Tax and Accountancy in Uber, uh, to give us actually maybe a, a view from uh, uh, the, the private sector, from, from uh, the, the pl online platforms, uh, um, business environment, and uh, maybe a little bit to focus on, on you know, the, the impact of, of, of on which, which these discussions will have on on the, the daily, daily functioning uh, of, of platforms and, and what is actually uh, the stand uh, the, the platform should uh, or, or are actually taking uh, with regards to this discussion. Francois, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you to the, all the speakers on the panel. Um, I'm just gonna give a little bit of a quick introduction about Uber, give you a few more facts about it as it relates to this discussion. Um, I'll then talk about uh, something on the digital taxes and uh, where our view and our opinion is. Um, and I'll round it out with uh, what my esteemed panelist in Estonia was talking about, about data exchange, because I think that's also a very uh, topical topic. Um, so obviously people think we're a digital platform, but we're actually very much a sort of a bits and bytes type com company. Um, we have offices, we have a permanent establishment in every single country in which we operate. And that's, that's something that people may not understand or appreciate, but because of the fact that we work in a very regulated environment, we do need to have people and offices 
and functions in every country in which we operate. And the lion's share, 75 or eight or, or north, 75% or north of all of our, what you might call earnings, goes back into a local country. Where the, and we call them the earners, the earners being the drivers, the couriers or the restaurants. So a lot of the actual cash and, the, and the, the money flow does go back into a local country. That's where, when we come to talk about data exchange, it becomes very important. Um, as you've read, and it's, it's public knowledge, Uber was hit very hard with the pandemic. Our ride side of the business was down approximately 80% over the last three or four months. So that's a substantial hit that we have, we have taken uh, whereas maybe some other, you know, it was mentioned earlier, some other highly digitalized companies may not have taken much of a hit. We did on our right side of our business. I will balance that and say on our each side of the business, where that's the restaurants or even other forms of delivery for supermarkets, we have seen a pickup in that, as especially once we got through the first few weeks as restaurants were able to continue operating by coming onto our platform. So the, I'll give you the full balance there. Um, we've been very much involved very, very early on from, with, with talking to the OECD, various other countries. We, we approach this in a sort of a, very much a transparent way, but also in a, a pragmatic way, a pragmatic approach to be able to arrive at something that we believe should be fair and should have a level playing field. And um, I'll come on to one of the core principles in a second, but essentially it's like that it should be, if we have any new taxes, there should be a tax uh, on net revenue, a sort of bottom line revenue as opposed to top line revenue. Um, I will say in that same vein, as I talk about transparency, uh, we were one of the first platform companies to work with Estonia, alongside Estonia and a couple of other countries in that part of the world to be able to digitalize and uh, work with the platform and get the information to flow as easily as possible. Um, I will also agree that the take up, um, the voluntary take up uh, may and does have its limits, but it definitely is something that we, we supported and we actually do continue to support this, this ability to exchange data uh, electronically. Moving to digital taxes, uh, obviously yesterday was a very interesting day. Uh, we have been working with the OECD um, to determine if there was an approach that could be viewed as a phased in approach, an approach that would look to tackle and deal with digital companies this year and maybe other types of business in uh, next year, in 2021. Uh, we understand that the you know, there's a lot more open questions around consumer facing businesses. And therefore we felt that the, the potential for a continued rise of unilateral measures that are based on, as I say, based on top line revenue and with no surrender jurisdiction and very, 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 uh, a large amount of open questions about a creditable nature of those unilateral measures was was the pill that was too 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 much for us to swallow so we walked away from one of our key principles which was not bring fence in the digital economy but didn't fully walk away from it we said we walk away from it in a phased in approach where we would look to have the oecd tackle digital and then tackle consumer um, i've written articles about how we would look to have some form of upfront arbitration to make sure that a lot of certainty could be put into these things. There's also, uh, we've discussed, I've written up a lot about how we could have some form of surrender jurisdiction, because I think that is very important as well. And uh, as I say on this, the other point is making sure it's a tax that's on the bottom line on net profit, not on revenue. Um, where I feel we are right now, is a little bit in no man's land. I think it def the, the proceedings have definitely taken a bit of a punch. Um, I hope that this is a pause as opposed to a, a full stop end of those discussions, because I do believe at this point, in order to get a global agreement, the OECD is probably the only organization in town that could allow that to happen. Um, and as I say, 
I, I am now increasingly concerned about unilateral measures that will have impacts across businesses. Um, and the impact will have an interesting effect, one that is yet to be seen. There's a lot of discussion. Some companies have come out and said, okay, they will, any additional tax, they will pass along to the consumer. And if that's the case, that's going to have a, a non-desirable effect whilst we look to uh, re-recover in the economies. If, for instance, you cannot pass it on to the consumer, then as we well know, I mean, companies are companies, it, add, it either goes to uh, the cost of labor or it goes to the cost of the shareholders. It's, it's, it's those three uh, sort of groups, either consumer, labor, or the shareholders who will end up paying for this. Um, and all of those may you know we would end up and we're looking at as a company how to model out how that would actually play out and what does it actually mean and i think that's a big unknown and what does it actually mean at a, where we are in the state of the economy where we're looking to have recovery so uh, very much in flux with respect to where things stand digitally uh, and we're going to continue as a company working with the various governments around the world and working with the OECD to try to get things back on track. Moving on to my third topic of data exchange. This is something that Uber has been very much at the table, and I would say we're the tip of the spear working with the OECD on the data exchange for platform companies. Um, if memory serves me right, I believe the OECD is gonna come out with their thinking on this uh, towards the back end of June. Others may be able to correct me on that if I got the date wrong. Um, but we're very much in the camp of making sure that there is complete transparency with uh, the earners that are on our platforms such that every country can feel confident that all of the earners are being caught within their tax nets and are paying their fair share and their right share of tax. Um, the the pro predominance of what we've been working on with the OECD is on how to sort of administrat administratively create a platform or an exchange that all companies can meet and is one that can be compliant and if needed could be, uh, can be understood to be 100% of the information that the tax authorities want. Um, and I'll come back to my uh, co-panelist here in Estonia when we've been having those discussions, we have been discussing some of the best practices we've seen in some countries on how to uh, share data, but we think that data exchange is something that's vitally important and uh, we as a platform company can play a big part in getting that up and running and shared accordingly. So lots going on, uh, lots that we're discussing with various governments, um, but I think yesterday was a, was a bit of a, a sort of a, 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 a little bit of a punch, but we'll, we'll, we'll see hopefully how that plays out over the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Francois. Uh, thank you for giving us actually uh, uh, your, your views and, and I'm really glad for, for a comprehensive uh, actually explanations from your side on, on, on those issues. And I think uh, on, on various areas, uh, the, the position is, is quite clear. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, I think it's actually good to, good to hear also, let's say, uh, the views from directly from the businesses on on on, on what uh, what can we what can we expect and also what can we sort of uh, foresee and then it's it's actually interesting I think that if there is if there is something that is joining uh, positions that were sort of presented so far um, it's it's actually it's it's it's, clear, it's a clear negative preference to. Uh, what uh, any kind of unilateral solutions would be to be fine here, and and this is something that uh, I think it's quite clear when we when we discuss uh, this this issue from different point of view that uh, w could be let's say the least um, um, favorable scenario actually or some something to 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 avoid. Um, I think we'll we'll come back to later uh, to do to this point as well. Uh, now, if uh, everything is all good. Uh, I can see Michael Jäger. Uh, yes, you can see me. Yeah, and I can I hear, hear you too. Great. So, M Michael, the Secretary General of the Taxpayers Association of Europe, uh, CEO of European Economic Senate, uh, 
Uh, I'll, I'll give you uh, the floor right now um, to, uh, to give us uh, your, your remarks. And uh, um, uh, so the floor is yours, Michael. Thank you. From the tax perspective, perspective, it's for us, it's important what Barbara already mentioned. For sure, everybody has to contribute to pay his taxes. This must be insured. Um, that's really important. But what we see now with the digital tax, that's, that's, it seems to go in the right, not in the right direction, in the wrong direction, and increase to the, the of taxes to digital corporates. And finally, we will lead to less tax revenues in the exporting countries. What was already mentioned, the, the assumption of, uh, by European Commission that digital co tax corporates uh, just pay less than 10 percent tax and the others pay uh, 26 or 27 or even more is not correct. So if, if you look to the detail, you can have a look on our uh, webpage, taxpayers-europe.org. We, 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 we have added two corporations, not of us, to independent institutes, and you will see that this assumption is not correct. And the, the most important thing is if you see you make, make a digital tax um, on, on, on uh, revenues, on, on, on sales, and not on profits. This will lead to an increase of taxation for digital corporates. And if you count, uh, I hope you will find the paper, if you have 1,000 units of, of uh, sales and your margin is um, sales and, and profits is 5%, so you normally have 50 out of this business. If, if the tax, the digital tax is 3%, you have to pay first 30 uh, units tax out of this 50. And then additional, you have your corporate income tax. In Germany, it's 30%. So you would have to pay by a profit of 50, 39, 39 uh, out of 50. This means 72% of a tax rate. And that's what you have to see. That is depending, it's depending of the profit margin of the corporates. So, okay. and if you know that the digital corporates pay taxes, this will lead to a big difference and the unfair taxation of digital corporates. That's um, the first question what must be solved. Oh wait, this is the wrong. Okay, oh, that, that's this, the first this. slide just show that, that we have no revenue problem, that you have an increase of the revenue. So that's that you will find it too, but just continue, just, just continue. So next slide. Next slide. So there you see the, the assumption of the commission and the real uh, by, by research institutes, um, research results of the tax paid by digital and non-digital corporates. And if you go to the next slide, there you see this, uh, this impact to the left line. If you have thousand units uh, um, uh, sales, and then you have 50 and the taxation at least to 72%. You can calculate it your own. And we were talking to digital corporates and it's not true to say, listen, they have no costs. That's the first wrong. Uh, assumption. Second, second, uh, the profit margin is not 90% or something like this. Realistic are uh, three to five to six percent. And that's what you have really to keep in mind. Then this proposal will lead to unfair taxation, digital and non-digital corporates. And what will happen now is the so-called gaffer tax. Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, plus Alibaba. What will happen? that was already mentioned by, by the uh, foreign minister and finance ministers, if we tax these digital corporates, then they will tax our German exports, French exports, non-digital goods too. This will lead to a loss of tax revenues. For sure we need a, a, a new setup of a tax system, but uh, a, a tax condition related only to sales is completely the wrong approach. And that's what we want to fight. We have to stop it. I'm afraid that the European Commission and Parliament are on, are on the wrong trip. And finally, you will see, and you can back against me, that, that we will lose tax revenues in the exporting countries. Because then a BMW has to be taxed. Uh, if you sell it in China, in, in US, you have to, you have to pay contribute a sales, a special sales tax to. That's for, for first for the moment. And if you have additional questions, feel free. Go to our webpage, uh, Henrik, please share it. And you can find there the paper. Um, that's a complete paper on the tax revenue side. And, this. and that's also important. What was not mentioned yet, that's very nice. Thank you, Henrik. Um, employees, 
you have it's a labor, uh, increase of labor, increase of jobs by digital corporates. These staff, these employees pay labor tax, they contribute. So it's not mentioned yet. And if you see the increase, it's worldwide. Yes. Um, if you see the increase, there, there, there is lots of tax power in these corporates, in these digital corporates, even if they would be less, pay less, say contribute. So it's not true to say digital corporates do not pay taxes. It's not true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And uh, thank you for also uh, uh, showing us uh, some, some, of, some of your calculations and, and estimates regarding, uh, uh, regarding the, uh, the potential introduction of, of uh, tax regimes. Uh, in the in this area, uh, I think uh, well you're right, and I think uh, Ivan also uh, can can uh, uh, testify that uh, I think the, there is a clear demand in in, in the European Parliament, um, you know, to uh, to discuss this issue, and and uh, it is it is also linked to what I think Barbara uh, mentioned uh, with with a sort of a purpose. What what would be the purpose of the income? Uh, raised by by the digital tax and 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 I think uh, yeah we might have had uh, some uh, general policy overviews that were or priorities that were that were raised at the beginning of this mandate of the Parliament and the Commission, but I think uh, there is now also um, uh, a quite uh, quite large uh, large um, need actually to uh, to finance the recovery efforts and, and uh, so I think these these are, these are also context of the discussion and thank you for for giving us. Um, uh, uh, other uh, other views actually on on, on those uh, on those issues. I um, uh, I had uh, some uh, actually uh, some requests for reaction uh, from from uh, some of the panelists. So I think uh, what would be actually good after after now the first round of, of, of internet inter interventions. And I really really would like to thank you all for for your inputs because I think uh, they were all very uh, very relevant and and uh, very very. Uh, useful contributions. Um, I would like to ask you if you want to react to uh, to some of those uh, remarks and some of some of those uh, um, actually interventions that that were uh, uh, presented by by uh, our, our fellow panelists. Uh, I, I know Barbara was uh, was asking for the floor. Well, thank you. Um, well, first of all, thank you for contributing, everybody. But I have a, a point that Francis made. Uh, that I'm definitely not friends with or, or actually that I don't think it will be very helpful. And this is the, the exchange of data. We have to be very careful from a consumer's perspective and also from an entre entrepreneurial perspective to open the, uh, the doors totally to data, to free flow of data and to data exchange. And um, uh, I think what the commission tries coming in by the back door is um, opening um, those uh, those barriers, and um, I think if, if enterprises like Uber, which I really love and I use all, all the time, is um, is forced to submit data on the one hand, and then on the other hand, voluntarily does it to be the nice guy and just not to be kicked out of the business totally as they try to, um, because of all the other taxi companies that are regulated are not deregulated, but don't have their, um, I think this, we have to be very careful. So submission of data is very sensitive and whether we do this voluntarily is something that I would actually not, uh, not support. The second point I would like to make is following up with, uh, with Michael or what Michael said is that uh, if we look at, at GAFA and, 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 and Alibaba and if they are taxed in Europe, um, then of course we run the risks of of uh, taxed in the other countries as well. We Europeans, I mean, I already mentioned that before. But uh, I think the fragility of the Western alliance at this point in time makes it ill-advised, totally ill-advised uh, to accept trade disputes any further. And after all, this all comes in in the package of, of trade um, negotiations. And a tax that also disproportionately uh, on American firms uh, you know, really risks alienating them above uh, 
uh, even more. So we have to be careful. This is uh, a general, this is actually a general point that I would like to make. And then there are points that we need to look into when we discuss taxation. Uh, first of all, the geopolitical acts as uh, arguments that I already mentioned. Then of course, all the philosophical arguments. Michael was discussing some of them. Dimitri made some points of, uh, with those as well. But I think we need to be very, very careful uh, because there is this sequentialist argument that in the end the consumers are harmed and once consumers are harmed um, uh, the companies will be the next ones to who who will be harmed because there will be um, less uh, less consumption so we have to keep that in mind and this is a vicious circle that we that we see all the times and then there are a couple of other general arguments that i would like to to point out so if we have this taxation this tax will have the same effect as anyone as any other tax does ultimately by passing on the costs to the consumers it will destroy enterprises and it will this destroy competitiveness of those enterprises. This is one important point. The second thing is that I would put into is that the digital tax is not neutral. And it would, and this is what, what very few people understand it would violate WTO rules as well. Because WTO decided to extend the e-commerce uh, moratorium, which is worth uh, 25, uh, two, no, 225 billion annually to June 2020. So which ends members from imposing trade barriers on digital goods. So, and as I already mentioned before, in the current COVID climate, we need more digital um, being set up uh, rather than destroy them or, uh, or uh, keep them up. Uh, Pull, kick, kick them out of the market. So uh, we should probably argue uh, with the WTO argument and hope um, that opens in, in Brussels, but also on this on the national levels, understand uh, that taxation is definitely not the best way to create businesses to support enterprises. Uh, it actually destroys and then. Maybe in the next round, we can discuss the philosophical issues um, that uh, all taxation imposes on individuals and enterprises. So I'd like to stop here, and I hope I have provoked you enough <laughs> and others uh, to, um, to keep the discussion going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, uh, does uh, anyone uh, want to uh, want to react to what was uh, what was said? I see uh, Francois actually raising hand, uh, so uh, yeah. I will pass the floor yeah. to you. Thank you very much, and, and and Barbara, thank you for asking the question because obviously I, I should clarify here. Um, we are never and have never thought of the notion of voluntary disclosing information. That is that is not what we do. So. For example, I can give you a couple of case studies here, like in, in Estonia, uh, it is actually the earner, the driver, whomever, they have to voluntarily choose themselves to be able to uh, share that data. And any, any driver or whomever, any earner on our platform who doesn't voluntarily choose that, then it doesn't get shared. Um, and, and when I say it gets shared, it gets shared through, you know, security protocols, it gets shared in, it's shared in a particular fashion, it's only particular parts of information. Um, I should also clarify that we are only talking about the earners on the platforms. We have had countries and tax authorities and other regimes come to us that want to ask for other information. If we take, for example, yourself, Barbara, and I'm really pleased that you are uh, using the platform and you are a rider on the platform, we have had tax authorities come and ask us for information on people who ride on the platform or eat on the platform. We have never shared that. We will never share that. It, may, it has no basis on what a tax authority wants. So we've always pushed back and we, we spend a lot of time pushing back on those requests. Um, but coming back to this notion of voluntary, what we've said to any country around the world that's looking for data exchange is that it needs to be in written rules. It needs to be part of a law and it needs to be part of a law that is agreed through whatever the legal process is within that country. Then and only then is that something that we will work with and through. Um, and what we've done is when we're having those discussions with those tax authorities, 
we uh, we make sure that those rules are rules that can actually be complied with and that are compatible with various uh, many other things. Uh, I would also say one thing as well, my last thing on this, Barbara, but just to repeat, we do not voluntarily share unless there is a rule. And obviously within the EU, you have the whole GDPR that we have to be very, very mindful of and we have to work within that framework as well. Um, but one thing I will say that I found was one particular country where they introduced some of these rules but made them very specific to Uber and just only for our platform. And I can tell you what we found, and this is empirically shown by the data, what we actually found was those rules was just, as they just related to Uber, the folks on the platform just went to other similar platforms. So the drivers on, the, on our platform just moved over. And we, we, we could see this through the data that we gather. Um, and so what we say to any single government is if you're going to do this, if this is what you want, then it has to be a level playing field. Not just because of the additional cost and burden it puts on Uber, but also on the fact that you will not achieve what you want to achieve, which is to get greater transparency into the amounts that are earned by people who are on platforms. Um, and and that, is, that is data that we've, uh, we, we, we obviously don't share the exact data, but we've been able to use it as we have discussions with other governments and tax authorities around the world. And at the cost of repeating myself, Barbara, we do not voluntarily share any information. Uh, thank you. Thank you for thank, thank, oh, sorry. thank you, friends. Sorry, yeah. Barbara. Sorry, but you know, this is the point. I know you won't, but you will be forced to. So, you know, just try to not to start with anything from the very beginning for the consumers. Okay. Well, th yes. thanks, thanks for your remark. Let's, let's see, uh, because Dmitri was raising hand and uh, I, I, I would like to uh, hear a reaction from him because I think uh, he can give us uh, also, uh, let's say, the, the example from, from Estonia, how, how uh, things are organized and what, what are actually uh, maybe lessons learned from, from that. So Dmitri, uh, if, uh, if you can react. Yes, thank you. Um, just a quick reaction to both Francois and, and uh, Michal um, about the points they've raised. Um, in terms of uh, uh, pre-filling the uh, information on the tax return, and uh, uh, this is how we do, this is how we've done for, for a number of years, uh, uh, the focus is on service of uh, taxpayers. And when we do the, the voluntary submission of this data, voluntary transfer of data, it's not for the um, payment of taxes or for the uh, compliance so forth, but it's to ease the burden because uh, if you don't want to declare that you have earned income on a platform, then you don't push the button in Uber to transfer the data and you would have to do that yourself. And you don't uh, equally copy the, the, the income data from, from your uh, bank account. You just, uh, you just don't do it. So, but if you do want to declare your income, then it can be very simply done by just pressing a button in an Uber app and that's it. And so this is, this is the service that uh, we have been offering together with Uber. And I must say that uh, uh, it's uh, very popular. It's not only Uber, so it's the, the uh, transportation platforms, it's the, the uh, home, uh, the, the, you know, Airbnb type, so, so um, uh, uh, home hotel-like services, but it's also um, crowd, crowd financing, crowdsourcing, uh, uh, and, and other investment uh, opportunities, which is actually the, the last one is, is particularly popular. It beats all other services in, in terms of uh, uh, reporting uh, the, the uh, revenue, reporting the income. Uh, in terms of uh, obligatory um, uh, submission of data, uh, what is really in focus for us as a country is that we keep the, the uh, task uh, to a bare minimum of what is required by the, the tax authorities. We have a number of jurisdictions, we have a number of ministries of finance who want all kinds of data on all kinds of people, and, you know, and, and that's not what we want. What we want is uh, the, some sort of identifier, so in Estonia it's a personal identification code, and the, the sum of income, that's it. We don't want anything else. That, that would just be uh, uh, enough for us. But I do understand the, the interest of platforms that know that this will become obligatory at some point. What they want is one agreed format 
and as simple uh, submission of, it, of information as possible. Because if we don't agree on a single format, if we don't agree on a single methodology how to do that, then at least in Europe, we are risking 27 different uh, file formats that uh, everyone will have to submit. And that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's what's going to be killing uh, our, our digital economy. Uh, in relation to what Michael said, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, what is a really good point about not taxing turnover is the comparisons of profit margins, the effective profit margins and the effective taxation. Um, uh, so uh, this is something to be really paid attention to. Um, when we talk about the comparison of traditional and uh, digital businesses, we also forget about comparison within the realm of uh, digital businesses only, because when we start taxing based on turnover, we are going to be disfavoring the smaller companies, the starting companies, because, you know, the, the trouble with taxing turnover is that you're also taxing the non-profitable companies. And so, you know, those companies who are already uh, uh, in the lack, who are able to, to pay the tax, uh, you know, they will be advantaged. And those who are struggling, those who are starting, you know, those who are still in the red, uh, they will go deeper in the red. So this is something that really has to be uh, paid attention to. And as I said, uh, we still, of course, favor the international solution that takes into account uh, all elements that relate to profit, if profit is what we are after. Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, I saw Michael asking for the floor, but uh, maybe if, if one one remark from my side if, before I give you uh, before I give you my Michael uh, the floor. Um, uh, if I can uh, get back to you, Dmitri, on uh, one one particular issue that was raised by by some of the speakers, and and uh, we are obviously here uh, in a, on a platform that that is also dealing uh, with the uh, challenges uh, related to SMEs. Um, in, in the considerations, for example, and from your, your experience being a presidency uh, com country in the, member, uh, in the European Union, uh, or from from your national uh, national experience, um, do do you feel that the uh, introduction of um, um, a, some concept of digital tax mainly targeting those uh, big tech uh, US companies could have some negative uh, impacts also on uh, the small and medium sized enterprises uh, based in, in the European Union and could, could this have a, uh, some sort of harmful or negative effect also on, on, uh, on, on the companies based, uh, based in Europe? Well, I, I wonder uh, what sort of negative uh, uh, effects uh, you would have in mind, but uh, um, uh, every time, uh, uh, you know, those digital taxes are mentioned as uh, targeted at U.S., uh, I'm reminded of uh, what to me is still a rumor because I haven't actively sought uh, confirmation of that, uh, of that uh, fact, is that when the DST was designed, uh, uh, digital service tax was designed uh, in uh, by the commission, they paid specific attention to uh, the threshold, the, the 750 million threshold, the 50 million thresholds, uh, and, and the services uh, that, that are covered to make sure that the American companies would be a minority of m and hit by the tax. So um, yes, uh, there's a lot of people talking about, you know, uh, taxing the GAFA. And we hate that topic of taxing the GAFA because, you know, we are after the new rules, the new rules how to tax digital economy because the whole digital economy is different. It's not only the GAFA. You know, it's, it's the whole digital economy that is different. And so, um, of course, there can be retaliation. There, uh, we know that, we see that, but uh, uh, that's not the language we would like to, to, to speak and that's not the language we would like to hear. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for, for the addition. Michael, uh, I, will, I will get back to you right now. Thank you very much. So I changed the, the, the place in Berlin, now it's quieter. Um, it's more quiet now. The, the, the problem we see, what was not, not mentioned yet, um, is beside the fact that we have now the Chinese and the American big digital players, uh, which the Commission assumes that they do not contribute enough with taxes. First, we have already transparency 
if you have a certain role model in Europe, you have to 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 to, to point it out as a state. You have to to show it to everyone. So there's nothing hidden in the tax. Uh, what what can be hidden legally? So I, I think that's really important. And what we realized today, and what I have tried to show to show to you, that digital corporates pay taxes and much more than expected. And if if you for sure if you have losses as a startup, you can carry them forward. So and it, it, I just want to mention Tesla, um, very smart uh, electric car. So we open a plant now in in Germany. So we we'll get 300. Uh, million subsidies, so, and they will not pay immediately taxes. Is this now illegal? Why? Right? Because they do not pay taxes, not. So we have really to take care. We start now with a digital tax, will will have a huge impact on these corporates, and there is a, a border limit now, but this is uh, some some millions. Then you have to pay the digital corporate. And what will happen? Amazon and the others will split their business. And then the commission will make a new proposal that, let's say, a corporates with a limit 10 million sales will be taxed. And each corporate is digital. If, if you have a web page and you sell things via your web page, you make digital profits. And that's really a high risk that we start with the additional, say, once they, they think they do not pay taxes, which is not true, with the wrong start, complete wrong direction and put a high tax pressure on corporates. And what we need now, we need now tax cuts. And then in Corona to pandemic to, to come out with strong businesses, we need tax tax cuts and not the tax increase. That's for us with the Taxpayers Association, our main aim. And Germany with the cut down of value added tax is going in the right direction. And it would be completely wrong to implement now digital tax because what was already said, the consumer will have to pay the bill all the corporates will, the small corporates will suffer. So someone has to pay the bill and will be finally always the taxpayer. And what we also fear, if you listen exactly to von der Leyen, uh, carbon dioxide taxation, digital tax, as part to finance EU spending. We do not want an own EU tax, none of this. We have a structure to finance the European budget, that's nice, and we can, really battle if it's 1% or 1.3%, but we do not want the digital tax in addition to finance public spending. It's completely wrong. And that's why we have to think about a new system of taxation. Um, also to discuss with OECD and with all players in a globalized world, um, is it related to the added value? Um, how you can uh, ensure that really taxes are paid? And we, with the taxpayers movement, it's for us, it's completely indifferent if the tax is paid in the US or in Germany. It must be ensured that the tax is paid. And EU Commission approaches the tax should be paid, digital tax in Europe. So that's completely wrong. And you will see non-digital goods, if we start with the digital service tax, then the non-digital goods will be taxed too. And if you want this, vote for the proposal of the European Commission. If you're against support us, there's a libertarian conservative movement and the taxpayers to fight this tax. Very simple. Thank you, thank you, Michael. Well, I'm afraid we are not that far, you know, advanced uh, that we, we would have a yes or no vote at this time. Uh, I, think, I think the discussions um, are, are basically uh, at this point uh, still still uh, it's, uh, it's very beginning. Uh, I was wondering if, if uh, some uh, some uh, other panelists would like to uh, react on what was uh, what was uh, currently said by uh, I see I see Ivan uh, asking for the floor. Ivan, uh, thank you very much, Andre. I just would like to. Uh, reinforce Michael's point about nonsense of digital taxation because as I mentioned at the beginning uh, all of us we are talking about digital solutions how it is important for recovery and at the same time we would like to basically punish digital companies and punish the dig digital sector so it does not make sense I think uh, it doesn't make sense from a uh, perspective of having sectorial taxes because it would be only sectorial taxes. I, it, it would create unfair uh, conditions for businesses. And secondly, it would punish uh, 
basically digital solutions, then that's what we need for future. So we should uh, support uh, all uh, kinds of digital economy and not to punish it. So um, from a competitiveness point of view, definitely um, any kind of special digital taxation doesn't make sense. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ivan. Um, uh, is, is there anyone else? I, I know Barbara wanted to discuss uh, a little bit more like this philosophical uh, basis and, and, and let's, let's say the very contextual thinking of introducing, introducing taxes. Uh, um, I think uh, we still have a little bit time left. So uh, if, if there are, or if, if there is something that, uh, that uh, you would like to add, uh, to, to what has already been said, uh, I think now now it would be the time, and uh, and uh, I know also that uh, Francois um, would would need to leave us in a, in, a, in a bit. So uh, I think uh, that would uh, sort of uh, sum up and wrap up our discussion, which uh, so far has been uh, very interesting and I think uh, very inspiring as well on on, on uh, various uh, various uh, issues. Uh, so uh, Barbara, do you want to do you want to step in uh, with, uh, with one of your remarks that you were uh, uh, announcing a while ago. Well, well, well thank you. I, I'd love, I'd love to. And uh, I think the most important thing is that we need to keep up in Europe is tax competition and not tax harmonization. And if we, if we give in on this topic, we are doomed because Europe is competing uh, with the with the new G7 and not the old ones among each other. But we will have to because other countries, trust me will find a way not to impose the digital tax on their companies. And we must not, in Europe, we must not be the best ones in class in, in raising taxes. So I think this is very, very important And the first thing. Second, I mean, taxation in general is not a very good thing. I mean, we somehow need to finance uh, our states and governments. Um, but maybe we should also rethink with what kind of tax, uh, taxation we need and uh, if we need mass taxation in, ter in terms of uh, VAT, consumer taxes, etc., and not, and not the rise of other taxes and or create new taxes. As a matter of fact, we should actually abolish a lot of taxes and not uh, create new ones. So this is, um, this is a very important point. Then second also, I think that this, taxa this form of taxation is um, a digital taxation against the, the, the principles of, of, of uh, not only of competitiveness, but of equivalence and of um, um, achievement. Uh, that's, this is also very important on the philosophical issue. And finally, what we, ha what we keep forgetting in Europe, that innovation, uh, comes out to a large extent uh, from those digital companies and is born by those companies. And if we destroy them and if we cut those short, uh, then uh, Europe is losing out. And um, I don't think that the Commission wants to destroy our, our, our economy. So they should rather rethink and, and look at, at what the consequence will be. Thankful to Michael that he pointed out that this taxation actually was not supposed is not supposed uh, to affect SMEs but it will it will because how do you define the uh, how do you define digital taxation at all or what is a digital company those issues um, are not clear there is no legal there, uh, framework for that and eventually you can change that and finally, I think um, the logical arg arguments are the lack of clarity on what goals they're pursuing. Is it fairness? And for whom? For the consumer? Or is it just a money grab? And I think that is the point, the money grab. And now with refinancing green deals, I think this doesn't, this doesn't help at all. So in order to be competitive as a continent as Europe, but also as individuals and as, a country, as nations and enterprises, we definitely need to fight that tax and make sure that the EU is not imposing it on everybody.
Thank you. Um, th thank you for, for, for the remark, Barbara. I think I think there's uh, there was some uh, number of points that uh, it's actually good to raise also in, in, the, in the context of our discussion. Um, is, is, is there anyone else who, who would like to react uh, on, on what has been what has been said? Uh, or, or do you want to add any any final remark uh, at, 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 this, at this very stage? Because I think we, we are basically uh, getting to, to, to the end of our discussion. I see Dmitry uh, raising uh, his hand, so uh, I will pass the floor to, to, to Dmitry now. Yes, uh, uh, thank you. The last five to ten minutes, we've got uh, very interesting points points raised, uh, both both practical and philosophical. And unfortunately, we're running out of time to delve into those discussions. But uh, um, I'd like for us to focus on the fact that uh, it is about uh, uh, fairness, and if we require. Uh, traditional companies operating on the same markets under the same conditions to be in the same uh, competitive conditions, then we should do the same for, um, uh, at least we should strive to do the same for digital businesses because what we have as a situation on hand is digital businesses operating in a jurisdiction called the internet um, can operate equally in the whole world. Well. Perhaps with an exception of uh, Antarctis, uh, but I've heard they have internet there too. But they probably don't have a lot of paying customers. Um, the thing is that uh, they, the final taxation of those companies operating in the exact same matter everywhere in the world would depend on where they're registered. Is 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 that uh, is that something that uh, is fair? I mean, this might give uh, uh, a fresh new start to the race to the bottom, you know. So uh, uh, this th this is something we should be really paying attention to. Of course, I understand that large companies such as uh, uh, Google, Facebook, etc., they need real physical facilities that that we understand, and they will be located physically somewhere. But uh, uh, actually, with the uh, with the exception of uh, uh, talent and regulation. Uh, differences. Uh, it actually, you know, doesn't matter whether like physically located because they're not dependent on resources like you know, um, like like uh, extractive industries and, and stuff like that. So uh, basically, uh, we will face uh, a situation where where the co competitive conditions are uh, distorted, and this is why uh, you know uh, the taxation rules that we have now that. Uh, are based uh, on largely uh, factors that used to be uh, immobile are now highly mobile, and and uh, that's why they are escaping the taxation. In relation to to what uh, Ivan said, uh, uh, I rarely think, as as a as a tax uh, policy expert, I rarely think that taxes are a punishment. I think taxes are our uh, societal agreement on how we uh, contribute to our societies. Uh, and uh, um, the fact is that uh, uh, there should be fairness in how we tax uh, everyone who's able to earn income. So it, it should be based on the ability to pay. So uh, with this respect, uh, um, if the digital companies are able to pay, if they have income, they should pay the taxes and they should pay the taxes uh, in a jurisdiction that is somehow logically connected to where they make uh, their money. So the point is that our rules, which have started in the middle of 19th century in Prussia, um, where there was no internet, there was no <laughs> digital economy. They're just not fit for, for, for the digital economy in the 21st century. And we should feel free about designing new rules. We shouldn't feel free about designing new rules in a rush by the end of the year, not given enough uh, attention to analysis and discussions. Uh, to, to that, I, I would agree that uh, this is probably a bit, a bit of a rush. Yes, um, yes, thank you, Dmitry. And I think, yeah, I mean, for, for sure, we can, we can have a very long discussion about, about the very nature and, and, and uh, uh, efficiency and usefulness of, of uh, general taxation framework and then some, some of the concrete examples of, of taxation. Uh, but I think uh, uh, at least uh, 
as, as uh, my takeaway, and then I think uh, uh, this could be something also shared by, um, let's say, um, our, our audience today. I think it was it was actually a very good debate, uh, you know, raising a number of issues uh, related related to the digital tax and and, and uh, basically in, enriching the, the 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 debate and the consideration we should we should make before actually uh, entering into a serious uh, uh, discussions about how this should be designed and 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 what what should be the the, the purpose of it um I, I fully agree with ivan and i think this is also one of the one of the issues that that should be put on the table when discussing this um we, we should we should not uh, we should not uh, raise uh, we should not basically design taxes in a way that that, that they would uh, um, put an obstacle to uh, to further innovations and, and this is something where, where Europe is struggling and I think uh, we need to also look at this um, at, at this uh, policy from, uh, from, and this was also so I think one of the one of the areas that was touched upon we should look at this uh, not only from from the European level but also globally and and this uh, this this is this is a sort of a, a a topic where we can see that you know our considerations can have uh, can have uh, global consequences be be it on a, on a trade level but also be uh, let's say on, on the competitiveness level so i think that this was this was um, an important uh, point point to make as well and and as well with the a point that i was mentioning uh, earlier um, i think uh, we can disagree on 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 means and we can disagree uh, we can have various views on on the design etc but i think what was what was clear as a message also um we we should uh, we should sort of avoid uh simple unilateral solutions that would that would not uh, make um uh, actually uh any any, any effect uh, on a positive in positive terms um for creating a a uh, good business environment uh, which would help uh, strive uh, make innovations and, and and companies and also we should we should also bear in mind uh, potential um, uh, effects that uh, yeah, this, the, these these uh, steps can have on on the small and medium sized enterprises uh, which which i think is, is also one of, one of the one of the key issues um, i think we are re really getting close to uh, to uh, the, the end of time that that we uh, reserved for 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 the dis discussion um, i would like to thank all of you for taking very active and and uh, very dedicated um, uh, part in, in in this in this discussion i think uh, uh, the, the debate also showed that uh, this definitely is not uh, a last uh, you know, round of exchanges on, on this very, very interesting and, and topical issue. And also, I think, uh, uh, given, given to the, the recent development on international level and then the potential follow up on, on the European level, uh, I, I would be definitely happy uh, to, uh, to see you all in a later stage and maybe, you know, to reconvene again and, and discuss, discuss this issue um, uh, uh, again and, and in the future, so that so that we can sort of uh, uh, you know elaborate uh, on on uh, on the views, but also share experience uh, in, in in this area. So um, uh, thank you uh, uh, to all of you once again. Uh, thank you SME Connect and all the partners for uh, for uh, uh, making possible. Um, this uh, this uh, actually for for making this event possible even even in this uh, online format and I hope that maybe if if conditions allow for it the next round of discussions will be held in public and and uh, we should be we, we should be able to um, uh, maybe interact better and more uh, uh, on on the on this issue so thank you very much uh, to all of you uh, thank you uh, to our viewers and audience for 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 uh, following us and I wish you. Um, to all of you, uh, the uh, good day, good day to Francois, uh, and and the good, good, good rest of the day uh, to to all of you uh, around Europe. Thank you very much, and uh, see you soon. Bye.